I have been an enthusiastic 12.9 inch iPad Pro user since 2018 when they came out with the kind of revised new model. My wife still uses it. It is a great device. I even have, like you can see over my shoulder, a dedicated iPad desk because I love using my iPad. It is by far my preferred computing device. But I don't think the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is the right iPad to buy right now. In fact, I think it's kind of a bad one at the moment, just the size. And we're gonna talk about why I think the 12.9 inch iPad Pro is not the iPad Pro you should be buying. Now, I love my iPad Pro so much that I say I have an entire desk devoted to it. I spent an entire year really working to make it the device that I use. Back before we had stage manager, before we had good external screen support, like you can see behind me. I spent a year coding on it, you know, using servers, doing a whole bunch of stuff to really make the iPad Pro the device I wanted to use. And what I came down to is that second screen support was terrible. So why did I even bother with that on previous versions of the software? And I was fighting the software a little bit overall, right? Getting Blink Shell, getting LumaFusion, other things to work. It works, but it wasn't as nice as it could be on my Mac OS setup. And really the biggest hampering was that I couldn't get good external screen support. I had two black bars on each side, pillar boxed, and it just was only okay. We had LumaFusion and Blink Shell, which attempted to use it, but they were only okay. Now, luckily with iPad OS 16.2, we have a far better user experience that we can be using, right? I'm running the beta behind me. You can see I have a couple applications open on my second screen and I have a couple applications open uh, in split view for reference on the iPad itself. This is perfect. This is what I've been waiting for with the iPad to really turn it into a productive device that I can use all the time. Now, that doesn't actually mean that I love my 12.9 inch iPad Pro anymore. The truth is it's huge. When I take it anywhere else to use on my lap or as a tablet anywhere else, it's just so big that I almost always end up using it in laptop mode. It is barely a tablet. We'll say barely a tablet because most of the time it's just too big to even use as a tablet, which is why I think there are better iPads out there right now to use as a modular computer, as something that that can be a tablet, that can be, you know, set up at a desk and have a good uh, productivity environment with a screen and a second screen and multiple applications open. I think the iPad Air or the 11-inch iPad Pro are far better devices for most people. Now, the biggest knock against either of the 11-inch iPad, uh, either the iPad Pro or the iPad Air, is that when you need lots of screen real estate, they're just smaller, right? So the iPad Pro really was the best device to get lots of work done on all the time because all you had was that 12.9-inch screen. Well, clearly that's changed because we have iPadOS 16.2. Either of those two devices will support a second screen just like you see behind me. So I could have a good tablet sized device and then I could bring it down to my dedicated iPad desk and I could set it down and have a second screen and have multiple windows open, multiple things to reference, right? I could have even a, you know, an ultra wide monitor behind me and have three or four apps open all across the screen, see lots of stuff and also have a good tablet device that when I take it somewhere else is not this unwieldy huge device that kind of is hard to use as a tablet. The other great thing about second screen support that you can have on you know, any of the M1 iPads is that you have better ergonomics in many ways. Now you can see behind me, I actually built a Visa stand um, so I can move my iPad wherever I want, but most stands are far too low. You can't move them wherever you want. This one I can bring closer to me when I want to draw, when I want to work on my YouTube thumbnails. There's lots of good things about the Visa stand, but having that big second screen right in front of me that's always in the same position is excellent. It's just better for ergonomics. So I can look straight ahead and focus on the screen. So with either the 11 inch iPad Pros uh, or the, sorry, the iPad Air or the iPad Pro, the M1 devices, M2 devices now with the 11 inch iPad Pro, you can have that second screen support. You can have better ergonomics all the time. And like I said, when you need portability, both of these smaller devices are simply more portable easier to go in bags. You need a smaller bag to put them in. Their batteries are still going to last a long time. The keyboards are nice for them. They're as good as the 12 inch, 12.9 inch iPad Pros. Now for most people, I would say that the 11 inch iPad Air is the right iPad. If I was buying an iPad for my wife right now, I'd say the 11 inch iPad Air is the right device for her. Still got USB-C. It's still going to support a second screen for the dedicated iPad desk I've set up for her. It's just smaller. It's easier to take places, easier to throw in her bag when she needs to take it out to work. It's just a nicer device. It has, you know, less storage than we can get on the iPad Pros, it's topping out at 256. There's less RAM as well, but the truth is most people don't need that. They're checking Facebook. My wife's doing email. She's editing some audio uh, to set up uh, tracks for her skaters so they can have their programs and she doesn't need it. She's not, you know, editing 
humongous amounts of tracks with multiple layers or humongous amounts of video with multiple layers. She's doing some very light audio editing to produce tracks for her skaters. That's it. The 11 inch iPad Air would be great for her and it is fairly inexpensive compared to the iPad Pros. But even for me, the 11 inch iPad Pro is $400 Canadian cheaper than the comparable 12.9 at every price point. Sure, it's not gonna have quite as nice a screen. Uh, honestly, I I never used the screen for its like full capabilities. I've never used reference mode. I'm not sure that I'd notice like HDR because there's so little HDR content out there. I'm not sure that I really need HDR content. When I look at it, it's always like, well, this is suddenly way too bright. I have to crank the brightness all the way down. So I don't even think I would miss that at all, which would make the 11 inch iPad Pro plus the keyboard for it the same price as the comparable 12 inch iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch. So I think right now, if I was buying an iPad Pro, it would absolutely be the 11 inch iPad Pro, probably in the one terabyte to match what I have right now with a keyboard. And then I could sell the M1 iPad Pro and I would come out far ahead because I would be selling this, recouping some money and getting a excellent device, a tablet that is truly a tablet that is really easy to carry around and a device that I can sit down on my iPad desk behind me and really use with the second screen support and have just as much functionality as I have with the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That's the device I'd recommend to you, either of the 11 inches. If you need more storage and you gotta go to the Pros, uh, it also gets more RAM at one terabyte with 16 gigabytes. But for most people, that 11 inch iPad Air is perfect. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. Support the channel, become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership, curtismichael.ca slash education to take one of my courses. Members get all my courses. Or you can find the courses on Skillshare below if you have a membership there already. Have an awesome day.